welcome everyone. Uh, I'm really, really pleased to see that so many of you have made it here um, to witness this flirt between IndieBio and Foresight Institute. Uh, I would like to kick this road mapping session of biotech and neurotech off with a slightly bigger roadmap. Um, and this is the roadmap of our kind of cosmic trajectory to really put the two uh, technologies into perspective. And here I start with a quote from one of my um, favorite books called The Human Project. And it begins with asking, who are we? 13.7 billion years ago, we were crammed into a single point. 10 billion years ago, we were stars exploding into existence. 3 billion years ago, we were bacteria. We were alive. A thousand years ago, we were all God's creations. A hundred years ago, we had proof we were one species, descendant from apes. 60 years ago, we declared we're all humans, entitled to the same human rights. And today, we could tell a bigger story. We could create an identity that moves us and that takes us places. And in 20 years, we could be Moonians. In 50 years, we could be Martians. In a billion years from now, we could be Andromedans living off new stars until we eventually become the creative force of the universe. This is quite a mouthful, but I really like this perspective because we often tend to think that evolution ends with us. And looking that far into the past also allows us to look that far into the future. Um, and it becomes clear that the current product of evolution uh, doesn't have to be the end product. We really are bacteria to what we could be in the future. And that's really exciting because we could be a lot. But it also comes with great responsibility. Because there is a pretty long list of existential risk rating that might prevent us from reaching such a future. Or any desirable future at all, really. And while there are still some natural risks um, that we have to learn how to deal with, which are here on the left, um, most, ma most risks really are man-made currently. And these risks really add up. So c would you take a quick guess of what you think is the likelihood of human extinction uh, in this century? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> we have an optimist <laughs> sitting right here. Well, I, I don't know the answer, and it, it's, it's, it's really hard to tell, right? But there was a, uh, an Oxford survey, and the median answer was at 19% risk of human extinction this century. Uh, supposedly, this will go up um, before it can go down. But that being said, the human-made existential risks are interesting because each time that we make a new technological discovery, we're kind of, as Boston likes to say, putting our hands into a big urn of balls and pulling up a new ball. And so far, we've only pulled up white balls, those are the benign technologies, and gray balls that were kind of dual use. But maybe the next time we will pull out a black ball, a discovery that really spells disaster. And at the moment, we really have no good way of putting balls back into the urn, right? Uh, once the discovery has been published, it's really hard to undo this. Um, so, when road mapping biotech and neurotech today, uh, we will touch on those risks potential, for sure. But I really also want us to focus and really not forget the immense positive potential that those technologies bear. And that perhaps thinking about the positive potential that is in those technologies might be the best way to overcome the risks. What do I mean with this specifically? So, we're standing at this bottleneck right now, right, where we could either be the force linking to this existential risk future or into one of the great futures. And um, if you really want to clarify this in terms of um, the sp specific technologies at hand, here are two quotes of how you, how you might think we might progress from here. Um, so the left one um, is, less than a year ago, and this is Hillary Clinton uh, addressing the Biological Weapons Convention in 2011, and she says, less than a year ago, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula made a call to arms for, and I quote, brothers with degrees in microbiology or chemistry to develop a weapon of mass destruction. A crude but effective terrorist weapon can be made by using a small sample of a number of widely available pathogens, inexpensive equipment, and college-level chemistry and biology. It's not possible, in our opinion, to create a verification regime for preventing biological weapons. So this is one trajectory into the future um, that probably leads downwards. Here is another potential future um, inspired by the same te technology, right? Um, and this is Marshall Savage in, um, Marshall Savage in Eight Easy Steps to Colonize the, the Galaxy. He says, because of us, the barren dusts of a million billion worlds will coil up into the pulsing magic forms of animate matter. Because of us, landscapes of radiation blasted waste will be miraculously transmuted. Slag will become soil, grass will sprout, flowers will bloom, and forests will spring up in once sterile places. Ice hard as iron will melt and trickle into pools where starfish, anemones, and seashells dwell. 
A whole frozen universe with thaw and transmogrify, from howling desolation to blossoming paradise. Dust into life, the very alchemy of God. So those are the kind of two options on the table, right? And there are only two options and there's many gray areas in between, but this is two ways that the same technology could go. And the same holds true for newer technology. So this is a little more out there, um, and it's both, in both cases it's mind uploads um, that are speaking to you. In the first case, um, in the existential risk future, uh, the mind upload says, and this is Bostrom from The Future of Human Evolution, why do I need to know ar arithmetic when I can buy time on, an, on arithmetic module, modules inc? Why do I need to be good with language when I can hire a professional language module to articulate my thoughts? Why do I need to bother with making decisions about my personal life when there are certified executive modules that can scan my goal structures and manage my assets so as best to fulfill my goals? Um, and some mind uploads might prefer to retain most of their functionality and handle tasks themselves. They would be like hobbyists who enjoy growing their own vegetables or knitting their own cardigans, but they would be less efficient than some other uploads and they would consequently be outcompeted over time. So this is one potential future, right? Um, and here's another one, inspired by the same technology. And again, an upload is speaking. And it's saying, my consciousness is wide and deep, my life long. I have read all your authors and much more. I have experienced life in many forms and from many angles. But what I have is not merely more of what is available to you. It is also the complex relationship between these particulars that make up my mind. There are ideas that can be formed only on top of such wide experience base their depth that can be fathomed only with such ideas. You could say I'm happy, that I feel good. You could say that I feel surpassing bliss. But these are words invented to describe human experience. What I feel is as far beyond human feelings as my thoughts are beyond human thoughts. Human life at its best is fantastic. I'm asking you to create something even greater. Life that is truly humane. Same technology, two pretty different futures. And what I'd like to think about today is that, yes, we are this unique bottleneck where we could re either be this false link into the future or we could really mess it up. But those are the two possible trajectories, really, that those two different technologies could take, downward or upward, and there's obviously many shades in between them, and it's really up to us. So I would like us to discuss the space of possibility within each technology, within biotech and neurotech, but I would also like us to go further than that because it's not enough to just focus on biotech risk and promises and newer tech risk and promises individually. Um, but we really are facing, uh, but I would like to um, really discuss how those technologies affect kind of our human roadmap in general. So given that we don't know which ball we will pull out next out of this urn, we can't just focus on the existing risks we also have to take the unknown unknowns into consideration. So I, I'd like to think us about how biotech and neurotech can really have a collateral benefit to create an overall civilizational framework that is robust, resilient, and even anti-fragile to regardless of which risk comes up in the future. And this kind of idea of strengthening civilization um, is one that we discussed in our paper on decentralized approaches to reducing existential risk with Mark Miller over here and Christine, uh, who I haven't seen yet, but it's something that inspired me to do a, a series of salons um, over the whole year on the f topic of strengthening civilization. This salon is one of them. Um, we had a couple of other ones on updating rationality, creating counterculture, artificial and human morality, and debunking social motives with Robin Hansen. And today we're focusing on human biology, but I think the spectrum is really large. And it resonates well with a with different concept called existential hope. And this concept is put forth by um, Toby Ord and Owen Cotton Brown and, and, uh, and uh, Owen Cotton Barrett. And they mention in, this, in their uh, paper on existential hope that while some people are trying to prevent um, specific threats to our future and they're reducing existential risks, others are trying to steer us toward a world where we are robustly more well prepared to handle whatever obstacles may come. And those individuals are seeking uh, to increase existential hope. And I found this concept so important that I created the project existentialhope.com to really try to change the mindset from one of existential angst and terror to one of existential hope. And this project is a collaborative knowledge graph and an issue tracker of kind of work that is out there that works toward positive futures. And it is divided by um, future scenarios, by focus areas and meta tools. 
And the purpose really of this website is to lock in and share the progress that we've already made a civilization on a macro level and help those who just enter the field orient themselves towards the causes that they can have the most impact on. And it's a pretty collaborative project. Um, if you click on the website, it's existentialhope.com. Here it's divided into vision areas, into focus areas, <laughs> into tools. Um, and what I've did for, the, whenever you click on, for example, if you click on AI in cyberspace here, you get redirected to a Google Doc on which I basically brain dump the best readings um, in that area, the best work in that area, the best um, talks in that area, and the best organizations working in that area to create kind of like a general knowledge graph. And I've done this um, today for bio, nano, and neurotech, which is here. So this is for you to use today during this talk. Um, this should be as collaborative as possible, right? I'm not an expert in biotech and uh, nano neurotech and nanotech, such as our guests here. But I've basically, if you click on bio, nano, neurotech over here, you get redirected to this Google Doc. And on this Google Doc, we will collect questions. So if you want to ask a question anonymously or, uh, or online, just go on existentialhope.com. It's super easy. You go on bio, nano, and neurotech. You get redirected to this Google Doc. And someone's, two people are already on there. <laughs> Um, and then you can, we can collect questions here, but also if you are working in the fields already, please just add the best readings, um, talks, and organizations that you know of in those fields as we go along. So we can really create a pretty comprehensive roadmap. This is for collaboration. This uh, spreadsheet is, uh, sorry, this Google Doc is open to edit starting now. Um, and this could be used even moving further along from today, right? All of those um, are, most of them um, you can comment on. And I would really like us to kind of create this collaborative movement of really issue tracking all the, all the most important risks that are out there. With that being said, um, now that you have a little uh, tool to use over the, uh, the course of the, the evening, I would like to welcome Lou, um, David and Arvin onto the stage uh, to start with the first part of the session, which is the roadmap.